All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you had a good weekend of shows. Hope you guys got out there and got some work done. This video, I thought we'd talk about live horns and tie in some concepts and techniques using the channel gate. And they'll be specific to the horns today, just because that's the instrument we're going to focus on. But the gating techniques I'm going to show you directly apply to other instruments, um, maybe more specifically drums, but other instruments in general. Uh, we're going to look at how we can create a smarter gate that's opening and closing more intelligently and reducing the background noise from the microphone but allowing that instrument to really punch through right at the key moments and not be triggered open by other random noise on stage you know not having a, a mic open up because the drummer hit a cymbal you know we just want those gates as much as we can live obviously we're dealing with a lot of noise and if your band or your church is still using traditional floor wedges and actually using speakers on stage pointing back at the artist as opposed to in-ear monitors. I would say these concepts are maybe even more important so that you can get your gate to open exactly when you want it to and not constantly being triggered open because of the floor wedge that's shooting audio towards the rear of your microphones. So <clears throat> either way, these are going to be great concepts for horns specifically today, but great concepts for other instruments that require or need gates during a show. So with that said, let's take a little listen uh, to the song we have today. This was recorded this past Saturday, October 2nd in Chicago at a private club and what a reception there. You guys should recognize the tune without the playback track in there. So I'm pretty sure the tune's going to be recognizable to a lot of you guys. And I brought it up because, you know, it has a great horn arrangement. As you can hear. So what I want to look at <clears throat> is both EQ and gating options for the horns specifically. So let's pull up just the horn track here. And... Let's go look at our instruments. So far I don't have any EQ besides a little bit of low cut uh, filtering going on. I do have my gates on. I'm going to take those off. We're just going to listen to the raw audio from the live microphones. And let's get all three of those in there. Sorry about that. So by themselves, they sound pretty great already and don't really need much EQ, but in a live situation trying to get, you know, the most out of our PA and get a, um, you know, get our subwoofers active only when they need to be for kick drum, bass, guitar and stuff, we don't want low end rumble going into our subs. So we're just going to take a look at each horn individually here and make some gating decisions. So we have our trumpet. And we just have a little bit too much low end going on. That is gonna affect our overall PA. So we're just taking our low shelf in here, cutting out a little bit. And the RTA, these bar lines that are jumping up and down showing you the frequencies. That's your RTA. It's a real-time frequency analyzer. The RTA is going to be kind of key in this discussion today about gating, but also EQ. We can really see we can really see the two octaves where our horn 
is most active. Obviously, we can see a lot of information from the cymbals and the live mics and everything, but if we really focus, we can see right where our notes are coming in. So our lower lower octave frequency was right around a thousand hertz, 800 to a thousand. And then again up around 2K. So we're just pulling a little bit out of there. And I'm gonna warn you guys, individually by themselves, our horns may not end up sounding great just listening to the horn section, but we have to remember we're EQing for the whole of the song, the whole of the band, and if there's too much information in our horn microphone or any microphone that isn't specific to that instrument, even though it helps to reinforce the body of that instrument, sometimes we, a lot of times we have to compromise and cut out information that adds body and warmth to that instrument on its own but in a whole setting where it's not soloed up and we have the entire band playing through the PA and there's this low mid information showing up down here that really helps for the body of the instrument but does nothing for our mix when we have all of our instruments going. So that said, let's move on, pull up our trombone. Because again, all this stuff down here is good information to have. It really gives the horn a lot of, of its warmth and whatnot. But all that low mid and low frequency information going to the PA is going to do nothing but muddy up your mix. So we're making, we're making you know hard decisions here today about what's important in our EQ and our instrument. Again, we can see right around 800,000 is that low information on that horn. And then we can do same for our saxophone. <clears throat> so because these instruments are all horns, you notice that we're EQing them pretty similar to one another. You know, they generally, between the three horns, their main octave is going to be somewhere around 800 to 1,000. Their upper octave is going to be somewhere around 2,000 to 3. So we're just pulling out the low mid, low information that would do nothing but create rumble in our PA. And then we're pulling out those main octaves that they occupy at so that they're not so piercing to the audience's ear. You're still going to hear the horns, they're still going to be totally audible, but there'll be a much smoother sound coming to the audience. I just like that guitar line. So there's our horns EQ'd up. And if that was all we would do to those horns, we'd be golden. Uh, horns are one of the instruments that are nice because they're so loud that your microphone volume, your input level gain, is usually turned down quite a bit because when that horn hits that mic, it really pops through the PA in a great way. So as a result, a lot of the stage noise, monitors, live drummer, isn't in those microphones as much as like a human voice would be. Because the horn's so loud and the input gain is so low, you know, if we listen to a section where the band's just playing, we 
without the horns. You know, that's super quiet compared to the horn volume. So if that's all you did for your live show was just a little bit of EQ so the horns weren't so piercing in the 2K range, I'd say good, you're golden. But if, you, if you're really striving, I like to, if you're really striving to get a almost pre-recorded sound from your band and not just live music that's loud, if you're really trying to sculpt a, a good mix, then we can go further and take a look at our gates and what they can do for us. Right. So again, we can see the bulk of the energy of the notes are coming in right around 1K, 800 to 1K. That's important to focus on for this conversation with our gate. So first of all, I would say do not use a straight gate that just drops off in a dramatic cliff. We're going to use the expansion mode of our gates. And we have three different levels of expansion. And you can see by the tail on the end of the gate how each of them is more drastic as, than the other as far as cutting the signal off. So if you wanted to be nice and light, you could just use the expansion to setting. The other thing I like to point out is the range. When the gate closes, how low is the volume gonna go? Default, this is set to 60 decibels. So anytime you use your gate and the gate closes, the background audio of that signal is gonna drop 60 decibels. While that can be great for making a very clean mic line our performers are so dynamic that it can start to sound very choppy and unnatural when the gate is opening and closing to 60 decibels opening full volume closing 60 decibels quiet than the rest of the band so generally i would say 15 20 25 decibels on the range is a good place to be, especially with a loud instrument like a drum or a horn. Um, if, if you were going to try and get your vocal mics, preferably your PA would be stable enough that you weren't worried about EQ or whatever and you could have an open vocal mic. But if you were going to try and get your vocal mic, you definitely want to try and gate it by maybe 8 decibels or 10 decibels on that range setting. So. We have our horn, let's activate our gate, and actually let's do this first, let's turn off one of the things I was going to show you. So this is just our gate listening to the entire frequency band from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz and opening it up when it sees loud audio. In this case the horn is the loudest thing in the audio being fed to the gate, so it's doing a pretty good job of opening it up and closing when it should. And again, if that was where you wanted to stop, I'd say good. If you want to go a little bit further, let's do that. Before we do, the other thing I'll point out is my attack is set to zero so that as soon as the gate hears the audio I'm trying to open the gate with, it opens. I'll show you what it sounds like if we start backing that off. You know, if we get excessive like that, you're going to hear the front end transient of the note being cut off. And I would say, especially with drums, that's going to be a problem because a lot of the drum is that first millisecond of attack. So if your gate isn't set to zero milliseconds on a drum, you're going to start noticing the front end of your drum hits being cut off. The horn is such an instrument that we can get away with.
maybe 20 milliseconds. And then my hold, usually guys, I honestly just keep my hold and release around noon. Especially on the X32 and 32, that's a nice safe place to be on your gate. If, if you don't want to overthink it, just set these to noon. Okay. And then, because we're going to go a little bit further, we're going to go and there's two pages to the gate. We're going to page down to the second page here. Page one, page two. Page two, on every input on your gain section, you're going to find something called a key filter. All the key filter is, is you telling exactly in that frequency band from 20K down to 20 Hertz, which frequency area is going to open this gate. So, in the case of drums, on a kick drum, you could focus that right around maybe 80 hertz, so that the gate's listening to just just right around 80 hertz. And anything that's happening up at 4K or 800 or 200 hertz isn't going to bother that gate. It's not going to open. That's not the guest it's looking for. The guest it's looking for to open its door, his name is 80 hertz. And when 80 hertz shows up, he's going to open his door and let him pass right through. But anybody else named 200 hertz or 800 hertz, they're not getting through this gate. So that's all the key filter is, is it's a frequency that you're focusing the gate on to listen to. And then the slope right next to it, there's different settings here. There's low pass settings, and then there's a Q function. And the Q is just like our EQ. If we were to take one of these frequencies, that's going to be the Q. And then it's going to allow you to make changes to widen or narrow the Q that it's listening for. And just like our EQ, you can hear when it's really narrow, it's a very specific, very specific area it's listening to. When we widen it up, You know, we can hear quite a bit more of that horn, and not just a very... Right? So let's go back over to our gate. So that's the sloping cue. So on a one cue, it's going to be very narrow like this. And then as you go out to two, three, five, and ten, the frequency it's going to be listening to is going to widen out. And that can be advantageous, or it can, if you get too wide, it can start opening your gate too much. It's listening to too wide of a frequency band, and now it's getting triggered by things you don't want. So you're trying to find the happy medium of how sharp to make that cue so that it just opens when you want it to. And then we're going back to our EQ because most of the energy is right around here, 800,000 hertz. We're going to focus our filter right around, you know, 850, 900, and we'll press that in. Now the gate is only listening to 863 hertz on a pretty wide cue. So it's probably getting 800 to 900, you know, 750 to 1000, something like that. And you can see the gate doesn't want to open as much. So we need to pull our threshold back. And now you can see our gate is just opening right around a thousand hertz just for that horn. Nothing else in the background is triggering it. You know, if we go over here and listen to part of the song where the horns are not playing. None of those drums are opening that gate. But as soon as the horn section comes in, that gate's opening right when it should. So we'll go ahead and do that for our other two horns. And because these are different instruments, they are going to be listening possibly in different frequencies on this key filter. So you just need to experiment. And if you need a visual reference, you can always go back to your EQ and check out your RTA. So we're on our trumpet right now. You can see a lot of right around 800, right around 1500. 
So we can go back over to our gate. We've got it set to 1.17 thousand hertz. And we can see that each gate is just opening for the guest that's invited. And the guest name we pick using our key filter, filter frequency. So, like I said, all that technique and stuff on the gate can be used directly for other instruments. Again, for a drum, a kick drum. Maybe focus this frequency around 100 hertz for a snare. Maybe focus it around 250, 300, 400 hertz, right where the bulk of the energy is on a snare hit. And we can look at a snare hit. Right here at 225. You can see there's a, just a ton of energy focused right there. So if I was going to use my key filter on my gate, it might be the first place I start to see if I can get it to open only for the snare. You know, you might fish around, but you can definitely use this as the indicator for what should open your gate. Here's our kick. See a bunch of energy right around 100 hertz. Bunch of energy right around 50 hertz, obviously, because it's an octave lower than 100. So if there's a watt at 100, it's probably going to be a watt at 50 hertz. Those are octaves. So, talking about our horns again, we've EQ'd. slightly different EQ settings for each instrument. We've initiated a gate, which would be fine if we just left the gate settings as they come stock, but we've also gone to page two here and initiated our key filter on each of our horns. So that we're, when we're listening to our horn section as a whole, those mics are just opening for the horns. As soon as the rest of the, they cut out and the rest of the band's playing, we've turned down those microphones by 20 decibels each. And if you're feeling confident, you know, you can crank this up 30 decibels. And the thing is, is you're not going to be able to get this surgical with every instrument using a gate. But things like drums, which are very loud and very fast, horns, very loud, very fast. These instruments that are really loud will allow you to tailor their gate so they open specifically when they want. And you're not going to be able to get away with that on every instrument, but the instruments you can, if you can close those microphones by 25, 30 decibels when they're not being used, when the tom drums aren't being played, if you can close those microphones and turn them down automatically without having to think about it, without you physically going and grabbing a fader and turning it down 20 decibels, if you can close six, eight, ten microphones when they're not being used, you're going to have such a cleaner mix coming through your PA. If you really want your vocalist to shine, but you've got tom drum microphones open, you've got horn microphones open, you've got, you know, whatever. Maybe the guitar player is using an acoustic, but his electric guitar amp is still humming away in the background, and that microphone's wide open through the PA. If his amplifier is just sitting there humming on standby, you know, low zzz, at full volume through the PA, that's doing nothing for your mix, but creating, you know, confusion. So those are just some concepts that I wanted you guys to think about, focus on. And again, where you can, when you can, practice this stuff at home on your free time so that day of the show, you've got these concepts really nailed down and you can implement them with confidence. Because I'll tell you what happened to me and I'm sure can happen to a lot of you guys is you learn a concept like this, 
but you don't practice at home so you're not you're not super confident in how to implement it and how to carry out in a very stressful live situation so when it comes time to doing it you don't do it because you'd rather have that microphone up and operating than silent and dead because you made some bonehead decision that you weren't confident in so a lot of times guys they'll know these concepts but they're not confident in implementing them so when it comes time for the show they'd rather that microphone be open wide open just spilling noise than potentially implementing a gate or something else you know and having that mic not work when that person's supposed to be playing so it's really important to practice this stuff at home, guys. Anyway, hopefully that video was helpful. If you guys like this video, make sure you check out more. Please subscribe. We're really trying to get up there with our subscription and spread all the good news to everybody. So we will talk to you guys soon. Have a great week.